Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. David Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new teen therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. David is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. Hello, Rhonda. Hello, David. Hello, Matt. Hello, David. Hello, Marilyn. Hello, David. So we're doing a follow-up with our dear, beloved friend, Marilyn, and the most brilliant and compassionate ther- <laughs> team psychiatrist, Matt May, is with us, as well as, um, of course, David Burns, the founder of Team. And, you know, take it away, Matt and David. You're going to be doing follow-up work with Marilyn. We're just, I'm just really honored to be here and participate. Well, thank you both for being here. I really appreciate it. And you too, Rhonda. <clears throat> it's good to have you back. Um, for podcast listeners who may not recall, uh, we did a session with you, Marilyn, shortly after you had gone to your doctor who announced something totally unexpected. It was for routine medical visit and he said you've got stage four lung cancer and came to us in a state of ex- understandable extreme depression, extreme anxiety and panic, uh, anger, uh, shame, uh, uh, all kinds of emotions pretty much at the hundred level and it was really uh, a very a moving experience to, to to work with you on that, and uh, you you won a lot of a lot of fans. There were a lot of paradoxes going on uh, as well. I think sometimes spiritual concepts come to us as as, as paradoxes. Uh, but one issue was that was what what creates our feelings. Is it the events of our life, or, or is it the way the way we think about them? And the basis of cognitive therapy, as well as Greek Stoic philosophy, is that you have to interpret an event to have a negative emotion. And th- this is something that uh, a lot of people, including cognitive therapists, don't buy, don't really, really, really get. In fact, I've seen cognitive therapists just just recently complaining that they were upset because of some event in, in, in their life and, and not really wanting to look at their negative thoughts about it. Uh, but it was very dramatic because your feelings changed immensely in, in that session and uh, it, it certainly showed that our thoughts really do affect our feelings. And again, uh, another idea is that when you're depressed and anxious and angry, a lot of the thoughts will be distorted and unrealistic, that we're conning ourselves. And and this, again, is hard for people to to grasp, but it was so true. And there were a lot of should statements. I don't have your negative thoughts with me right now. We can put a link to that original podcast with the daily mood log and the brief mood survey. But there were a lot of should statements. You were questioning your belief in God, you were questioning your belief in the, in the afterlife, you, you were angry with religious teachers who you felt were, were perhaps partially, if not entirely, conning you, or con artists, and you were uh, criticizing yourself for not being, being religious enough. And, and one of the things that came out of it was a lot of fans that we have who are profoundly spiritual after that podcast saw you as their uh, spiritual hero uh, as as you know i sent you a lot of a lot of those a lot of those emails and what were some of the other i just heard so many people reaching out to marilyn and f- expressing their gratitude to you for just offering your time and and uh, 
um, thoughts and feelings uh, in such a vulnerable way. And I'm, I'm one of those people. I'm, I'm one of Marilyn's biggest fans. I'm just so delighted to be with yeah. her and you today, David. It's a, yeah. it's a real treat for me. Yeah. I'm very grateful. Um, how long ago was that, Marilyn? It was August uh, 12th, 13th of 2017. Those are, those are episodes 49, 50, and 51. I was diagnosed in March of 2017. Was that when you came to us right after that? Mm -hmm. So that would have been, you said they were, oh, the podcast would have come out though in, in August. I see what you mean, yeah. So it's been more than two years mm -hmm. since we had that podcast. Well, I, I think there are several things we want to go over to today. I was, we were driving in the car the other day and you said something that really t touched me uh, that now now you're you're still up up against up against it you've been so kind of heroic the past 2 years and you've had one thing after another hit you but now that uh, you told me just uh, within the last week or two that there's and you've gotten, I guess, superb medical care, but there's metastasis from the left lung to the right lung, mm -hmm. to, to the liver, to, 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 to bones, and, and you've had to go in for PET scans and MRIs and bronchoscopies. And, uh, uh, and so I think uh, people are going to want to know how, how are you doing now, what's happening now, but also you were saying there are things that you want people to, to know about you, positive things, and, and you've been very clear about your uh, dependence on alcohol in the past, uh, the, the great role that AA has played in your life, the great role that the Catholic Church has played in your life, the, your walks on the beach, the meditations, going to church, uh, I guess, almost daily, and uh, meditating daily, and going to AA meetings daily. But, um, uh, Tell us what's happening, and then we'll take a look at your your mood scores today, and at your 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 daily mood log, and and see see what we can do. And thank you so much. Well, after I had I had my PET scan, and then I had the bronchoscopy, <clears throat> and after the bronchoscopy, I asked the doctor uh, how my PET scan looked, and he said it wasn't good, and you'll get more information when you see your oncologist. Um, so between the time I saw um, him and then Dr. Doss, I was in a state of extreme anxiety. And when Dr. Doss walked in the room, the look on her face was much different than it had been in the past. And she also said, your PET scan is not good. Um, she, as, as you've just mentioned, she says the growth of the cancer in my right lung has increased. Um, there's been increase in the plural disease. Um, my left, my right lung now is hot. The, the cancer, I mean, in my left lung initially, where it was diagnosed, is now bigger and hotter, and now it's spread to my right lung. Um, the lymph nodes in my chest are very active, um, and that there's um, active areas of bone cancer in my spine and sacrum. And there's um, especially increased activity in my upper spine and lower spine. And um, I'm collecting fluid in the pleural sac wall. And there's lesions on my liver. And uh, she kept asking me if I was in any pain and I said no. And she was surprised because of the number of areas in the bone that um, has cancer in it and there's some spots spotty spots in my brain as well uh, more she says more activity in your brain and activity in your my skull cap um, so and she had tears in her eyes um, and she was pretty upset, and certainly I was too. And I asked her how much time did she think I had, and she said maybe a year, a year or two. And so she changed um, my 
the Torsiva, which had been working for two plus years, to a new um, cancer medication, again, pill form. And she said, if that doesn't work, then I will go to traditional chemotherapy, which means going down to Stanford and getting the uh, infusion treatment. And I was alone when I got this information from Dr. Doss. So I drove home alone. It's incredibly sad hearing about all of this. And uh, just really, really care for you and uh, I think we're hurting for you, and when people hear this podcast, there's going to be a lot of people hurting for you and caring about you. The other thing Dr. Doss asked me is, uh, you know, what are some of the things you really, really want to do before you die? Well, tell us about that. Well, one is I'd like to go back east to see my cousins. They've been extremely supportive. Um, My one cousin, Jane, is a microbiologist, and her husband is a nuclear um, physicist, and they both teach at NYU. Um, And and this is your what? My cousins. Oh, yeah. And her sister, my other cousin, is a neurologist, and her husband is an anesthesiologist. Again, they both teach at NYU. Um, And I got a phone message from Kate after she received the PET scan. She said... it doesn't look good, Marilyn. And I'm, you know, know that you're loved, and we care about you, and we'd love to see you. And they've also been uh, financially uh, sending me money once a month as well. So I'd like to go, and they live in Manhattan, um, and they both, because they have NYU housing, they both have homes in um, in Connecticut. Um, and the other thing I really want to do too is to go to Ireland. So my father's family is from there, and I found out where the coffee <clears throat> clan is in a remote village in southern Ireland. Um, and, but they spell their name C-O-F-F-E-Y, so I'm assuming that's the original spelling of my name and probably got changed when my, grandparent, my great-grandparents um, came from Canada to Ellis Island to uh, New York. And I'm feeling um, more tired than I have in the past. I don't know if it's because of the depression and anxiety, but I'm just, you know, I'll come home after church and I'll start watching TV and I'll, you know, start going to sleep. I was at an AA meeting last night and I was, you know, nodding off, and that's not like me at all. I've never done that before. Um, and um, since I was, you know, coughing up blood and having this cough um, after the bronchoscopy, it was recommended that I take about two milliliters, the very small dose of morphine in the morning. Um, And that has um, definitely lowered the cough, coughing. Um, So I don't know whether that's making me sleepy or or what, because I've really avoided taking the morphine at all for pain. I'm taking tramadol for pain. I take a pill in the morning, the pill before I go to bed at night. That seems to be working well, which is yeah. a relief. Can I take a look at what you brought in here? It's my mood survey. So, um, uh, as as is not surprising, your depression score is 20 out of 20. Again, the most extreme depression a human being can have. The anxiety is also the same, 20 out of 20. The anger is 19 out of 20. The happiness, which goes from 0 to 20, 0 being the lowest score, is is 0. And then uh, the relationship with Barbara, you didn't fill out one column here, this one. 
one row, I side. should say. Yeah, and that's uh, someone who you were kind of hanging out with and helping. helping this is my people, best friend. Your best friend, and that's 19 out of 20, which is which is really high. And then can I take a look at, at this? Uh, everything, all the negative feelings, uh, the no, nine categories are all 100 out of 100 in terms of depression, anxiety, guilt, inferiority, loneliness, embarrassment, hopelessness, frustration, and anger. And then the negative thoughts, I'm going to die s sooner than I thought because it's spreading, and that's 100. Uh, I'm afraid, afraid of dying, and uh, we want to come back and see what is, what is the thought that creates the fear. Maybe you can tell me right now. Probably the fear of um, pain and dying alone, not asking for help. I just remembered um, a colleague of mine died of non-smoking lung cancer probably 30 years ago. And he had a horrible death. I mean, he's on oxygen. And when I would talk to him on the phone, I mean, you could you could hear him hardly being able to breathe. Wow! Like he was suffocating. Horrible. And he was only thirty-eight years old. Um, and then I, I I am alone. I feel alone and scared. And again, that's an emotion and probably the yeah. same the same negative thoughts. Uh, I'm going to, to die without having lived a meaningful life. Uh, again, 100% true. I'm, ab I'm abandoned by God, 100% true. Uh, I'm going to miss people, nature, and animals, and cats and dogs. Especially. Yeah. Hundred. I work hard at my spiritual life and I'm I'm getting nowhere, 100%. I have no faith, 100%. I still can't believe and accept that I have cancer, non-smoking cancer, 100%. I don't know how to spend the rest of my life, 100%. I'm wasting my life, 100%. And uh, I don't know how, how I'm going to die, 100%. So, I can't imagine a more, more horrible situation or more intense negative thoughts, negative thoughts and feelings. Um, yeah, Marilyn, I'm, I'm so, uh, so glad you're here uh, with us today. It's a real joy to, to see you. and. A couple of things you said that I just wanted to acknowledge, and one was, it sounded like the moment the PET results came back to you, your anxiety shot up mm -hmm. to extreme levels. You knew something was off, and then when you saw Dr. Doss's expression on, on her face um, and her, her tearfulness, that, you, that was when it really hit home for you that this is, this is serious. And... Um, yeah, I'm feeling yeah. feeling tearful as well, thinking about that. And especially you driving home alone in that context is breaking my heart. Yeah. And I'm um, just glad you're here with us today. I'm glad I'm here too. <clears throat> sounds like it's been also just affecting the quality of your life quite a bit. You've, you're more fatigued, tired, and um, run, run down. And, Coughing more? Did you say you, you were coughing? Up? I was coughing up blood. That's that has stopped, and the coughing has decreased. I think that's the result of the bronchoscopy. <laughs> oh, okay, that was just, <laughs> that a temporary coughing. thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear you're not in any any pain right now. That's a blessing. Well, that was so confusing when Doctor Doss, you know, said that. Well, doc, first of all, the doctor did the bronchoscopy, but when she said the PET scan was so bad because I don't feel sick. And people don't believe I'm sick because I don't look sick. Um, and it's been really hard when, you know, people, when I told them about the PET scan, it's like the, it, the realities didn't match. Right, right. You know, because, I, again, I don't feel sick. 
I'm not in a lot of pain. Although I did notice when I was taking a shower this morning that, that I can feel the pain here in the bone area. Um, but, you know, I don't feel sick, except I'm, I'm more tired. But, um, you know, it's, it's still hard for me to wrap around the fact that, you know, not only am I, is this cancer spreading, but that the, the, you know, the uh, sand in the hourglass literally is going down. <clears throat> and so many of your thoughts uh, on your mood log are about uh, dying and being afraid of dying. You, you had a colleague you witnessed die what, you know, a horrific death, just gasping for breath. And, um, and that's, that's terrifying, I'm sure. Um, and then you have these, it sounds like you have some choices you're being presented with in terms of your treatment and... I would imagine that might be confusing as well. Yeah. yeah I'll get a PET scan um, next month, so we'll see if this new <clears throat> medication is working at all. <clears throat> so it's, it's always the waiting, the waiting, the waiting, which also increases my anxiety. Um, you know. Yeah, to be, able to <clears throat> not be in the dark and not know what's, what's going on. Right, yeah. right. How does it feel be, being here? I know this is something that's very important to you that you wanted to do, and we're incredibly grateful uh, f for you. Uh, we, we've had a couple of uh, questions that people have written in on, on aging, and then uh, we've been thinking of having a podcast. You know Steve from Colorado? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're going to have, have Steve on a podcast as, as well. Um, I know there's some things that you want people to know about you and, and there's also your your daily mood log here and uh, I'm thinking maybe one way to do it would be to work on some of the, your negative thoughts and feelings first. See if, if you want, if we can turn around some of this intense horrible emotions that you're having and then we could go into some of the things that you want you want people to know. I don't know if that word or would make sense to mm -hmm. you. Yeah, it does. Um, what, what's it like being here right now? <coughs> um, it feels safe because um, I really uh, I've known you two for a long time, and um, you know, you've been very important um, mentors and guides. Um, and um, um, you make the word grace a, a verb and not a noun. And I'm really grateful for that. Um, Can we just stop at that for a second? What, what does that mean that you feel safe here? What, what, why is it important to, to feel safe? Because I feel like I'm believed here. Because since I don't look sick, a lot of people you know, kind of say, oh yeah, yeah. Um, but they don't. They're not understanding the, the depth of um, my fears and, um, you know, that every morning I wake up and I, I, I'm reminded I have cancer and I, it's, I ask myself, how much longer, how many more days will I be able to wake up and feel as healthy as I'm feeling? You know, when is it going to hit that I'm not going to be able to breathe because of the cancer in my lungs? Or is it going to be the bone cancer that gets me? Or is it going to be the brain? Or is it going to be the liver? Um, or is it going to be the lymph glands? I mean, it's like, it's a constant circle, circle, circle. So I feel safe here since, you know, you both have medical backgrounds and you're both incredible psychiatrists. And, um, and I have a lot of trust in Rhonda. Um, I've known her for several years. Um, so it just makes me feel that I'm being seen and heard and held, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Why is that important to you? Um, this may sound, you know, strange, but it it, it feel almost feels like I'm being held by you know a power greater than me, or you know the divine, or 
um, something I really can't explain or, or, or put words to, really. Mm. That's pretty high praise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> yes, my child. <laughs> but uh, uh, fe feeling, feeling cared about, particularly uh, in light of your own intense self, self criticisms. Yeah. And I think one of the things that made your previous uh, podcast so uh, incredible for people even from a spiritual point of view, is your uh, raw uh, honesty uh, about how you're feeling. And, and somehow that, that seems to come through as a kind of uh, spiritual message mm. for, for people. Um, wanting to do a little bit of an agenda setting, but I don't know if you feel really understood yet in terms of how you're feeling and oh I feel very understood yeah uh, now this might seem like a strange question um, and I know there have been times when the answer has been no too but is this something that you would want want help with today yeah that's why I'm here this is kind of driving me crazy <laughs> the negative thoughts yeah um, one one uh, thing that I think is important, and I hope I'm not being overly intellectual or something, but that the some people say, oh boy, if someone has the serious things that, that you have going on, then obviously you're going to be feeling depressed and anxious and, and, and hopeless. And the problem with uh, buying into that kind of thinking, although it might seem realistic or compassionate, it kind of condemns the, the person to... To, to misery, uh, and you're you're buy, buying into the the distortions, and there's a lot of thoughts here that are, are are very distorted. What 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 kind of help would you like today? Suppose uh, you know you walk out and we're done, and at the end of of our session, you say, well, "Boy, that that really met my expectations." What what would happen? What would be the miracle you would ask for? That, you know, even though I have terminal cancer, that um, somehow I can carry away from here um, some hope and um, to find a way to really live the rest of my life in a meaningful way. Um, yeah. Do we need to do any paradoxical agenda setting? We decided to rename A assessment of resistance rather than paradoxical agenda setting because hmm. no one knows what paradoxical agenda setting means. Right, right. I, I'm, I'm on the fence about that myself. Whoa. <laughs> uh, I'd be happy to, to do that or just take a crack at it and see if it goes anywhere. Maybe we don't need to do any paradoxical agenda or assessment of resistance. Usually, when I think that to myself, I, I'm wrong and I regret it later. But uh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> what, well, let's let's briefly let's briefly ad address it. You, if we had a magic button and you can press it, and all these negative thoughts and feelings would disappear, and you'd be happy, and joyful, <laughs> even though I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your but anger would disappear, your depression would disappear, your self-criticism would disappear, your anxiety would disappear. Yeah, I'd push it. I think we can accomplish that. <laughs> 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 I, and I'd be delighted to do, to do that work. I, I mean, I could, I could dig around and see if I could come up with reasons not to press the button. Would that be worth we we Thank could, or we could or... just forge ahead and wish we hadn't, and then do right, it later yeah. too. <laughs> I, I'm okay either way. What do you think, Rhonda? I think we should um, delve into and see what those be, the thoughts and feelings say about her that are really special and meaningful, and why you may not want to give them up. I think that's really worth it, worth the time. 
Yeah, let, let, let's do that. Let, let's make do our li list of positives here, and we, we can we can go through it pretty fast. But I, I think you're you're absolutely right. Let, let's start with your negative emotions. You're hundred percent depressed, as depressed as a human being can be. Uh, and you press the button, and and you're, you'll be happy. Your <laughs> depression will disappear. What what does the depression and sadness, and down and unhappy? Say about you that's positive and awesome. What what about that? Is shows about you and your your core values that's that's positive. What are what are some advantages uh, f for you in feeling that way? Well, I think I'm very realistic. Okay, put put that down. It it it's certainly realistic. Is that uh, important? Yes. Uh huh. Is that powerful? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, what what are some other benefits? Um. Well, I, I, as I was doing this, I was also, you know, putting myself in someone else's shoes, and it, I, I think it it speaks to how empathetic I am. Is that important? Very important you for could me. Put that down. It shows how empathic and compassionate. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Another one that I thought about is is, is that uh, your the intensity of your depression is a reflection of your passion for what for life and what you're losing. Mm -hmm. Is that important? De definitely, put, passion put for down. life pa shows your pa passion for life. And then uh, we could, couldn't we also say it's appropriate? Definitely. Because I think since it is appropriate and realistic, hopefully it's giving me the uh, reminder of gratitude um, yeah. for the little things that happen during the day. Yeah, yeah, put that down. That sounds huge. What, what kind of things do you, do you feel gratitude for? Well, you know, the moon is like a little sliver. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and the other... You know, last month the moon was full. It was just gorgeous. Um, hearing the birds sing in the morning, um, and there's two um, oh, ravens in my neighborhood, and I love to hear them um, chat with each other. Oh yeah, uh, in the yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. And of course, my dogs, um, and my next door neighbor's cat, and uh, um, and Cleo, um, who. I can't remember. Can't believe I, you know, held her as a, a baby, and uh, remembering how hard it was, but not how painful it was for all of us that, you know, she had been diagnosed at birth with Down syndrome, and now she's probably going to be getting engaged next week. That's that's awesome. So you've been an important person in her life. Yeah, I have yeah. been. I also told Dr. Doss that I had to live in order to vote. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, uh, another uh, the good thing about depression, I may not live to vote in the upcoming election. That's, election. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's major. That's probably the primary reason for the depression. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> can't, can't, can't vote um, in election, maybe. Yeah, the uh, uh, the uh, you you. We probably talked about Emily Dickinson from time to time, mm -hmm. and uh, it, I mean it's like, I just thought she was a silly poet when I went to Amherst, and, mm -hmm. and I, there was a lecture on her, and uh, I saw just how how powerful her poetry was, and the the, the you can only gain th through loss. Is 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 mm -hmm. the message when you lose, you then you can taste what <coughs> what, what you're losing. Um, it probably sounds trite, but it's pr pretty profound, and that's that that's what that's what you're saying. Uh, and there's uh, and and you mentioned compassionate on the list of positives. That's compassion for yourself and for others. I mean, yeah. I, I, it's it's easier for me to be compassionate towards others. It's harder for me. To be compassionate towards myself. 
I think being here is being compassionate towards myself. Yeah, absolutely. Now, how about uh, anxiety? You're a hundred percent anxious and panicky and worried, and if you press the magic button, your anxiety will vanish. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. Well, what are what are some good things about your anxiety? Well, it keeps me alert. Is that important? Yes. Okay. It keeps me alert. And it ensures that I do exactly as a doctor tells me to do. Okay. Take my medications. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm eating healthy, I'm not drinking, I'm taking my vitamins, I'm exercising, drinking a lot of water. So, um, you know, I think the anxiety makes me, you know, take care of, take, take care of myself. So keeps me alert, comply with my medication, living healthy, and take care of myself. It's a motivator. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah. The anxiety is a huge motivator. Yeah, so that's 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 great. A huge mo motivator. And then, how about um, your uh, guilt and shame and badness and remorse? A hundred. You press the magic button and. They'll all go away. That's harder for me to to see the positives. Oh, that should be the easiest one. <laughs> um, one I can think of is that I tend to have high standards. Is that true? That's is true. that important? That's very important. Okay, uh, high, high standards. You're... you're if I'm just speculating, part of your shame and guilt is because you're losing your your faith. Mm -hmm. and, and Definitely. So what, what's so if, if you press the magic button, you'll lose your faith, faith, and be proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what what's great about being ashamed of losing your faith? What does it show about you? That I'm a seeker. Is that true? That's true. Is that important? Yes. Uh, and uh, put put that down. I'm I I, I am a, a seeker, and um, uh, uh, d does it also sh sh show that you're honest? Definitely. Is that important? Yeah, very. Um, and straightforward. Yeah, honest and straightforward. I hope this gets recorded okay. It's interesting that the, the whole thing of the seeker was, I think it was Rumi who has a quotation that says, what you seek is seeking you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yes, I am, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> you did push the record button, didn't you? Uh, uh, well, do, you ha do you have to <laughs> press the record button? <laughs> the, the red light is on here, so I think, I think we're probably recording. We just have to put our faith in some higher power of electricity and hope it's all Technology. working Technology. properly. Uh, the, um, so that, that's all really good, st good stuff. The, in, in a way, your guilt and shame is, is your spirituality. Mm. Do, do, do you see that? Kind it's, of. Well, Matt will explain. <laughs> I guess I sometimes feel guilty when I've betrayed a moral value, something that's deeply important to me. Mm -hmm. And um, my sense is your, your convictions are deeply important to you. And, and I might feel immoral or wrong or bad uh, to do anything or think anything in, in opposition to them. Mm -hmm. And so feeling guilty is an indicator of your morality. Ah. Isn't that yeah. cool? That's, uh, that, yeah, thank you. And, and your spirituality. Because hmm. uh, like uh, Charles Manson was, was, was atheistic, and, but he wasn't at all ashamed. I don't think he <laughs> suffered much from guilt. <laughs> no. no, I don't. Uh, yeah. I don't think the occupant of the White House does either. Hmm. So, um, well, we can power th through this. Um, inferiority inadequacy, worthlessness, you feel those at 100%? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what does that show about you that's awesome and positive? Again, it's, I'm honest. 
Mm -hmm. Honest about your, your shortcomings? Mm -hmm. Is that important? D definitely. And areas, and it also shows areas that I like to uh, grow or change. Okay, yeah, sh uh, sh areas where I, where I want to change. And have changed. Mm -hmm. um, Your value what, system of personal growth. Yeah. What, what, what else do these feelings of inferiority show about you that's positive and awesome? That I want to be a better person. Is that important? Is that very, very important. Put that down. Want, want, want to want to be a better person. What what else does it show about you? That's all I can think of, David. Something you have in common with Donald Trump. <laughs> oh God. Humility. Tr tremendous humility. Yeah. <laughs> humility. Yes. And that's important. That really is important to me. It, that's huge, right? Yeah. I hope I'm forgiven for my disrespectful jokes. <laughs> I'll, I'll be probably assassinated by half of our listeners. I will lose half our audience now, probably. If anything happens to Maryland, we'll know it's Trump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, anyway, I don't mean to make fun of, of Donald, Donald Trump or anyone else, but he, I, I think humility is a beautiful spiritual quality, and you certainly manifest it. Uh, lonely, are you frowning at me? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was getting scolded. I, no, no, I'm not. No, this is a really sad. My political comments. I've, I've been told not to make political comments, so I apologize deep, deeply. It's, it's disrespectful. Lonely, unwanted, abandoned, alone. One hundred. What? What? What does that show about you? That's beautiful and positive, Marilyn. Um. Well, that relationships are important to me. Is that true? Yes. Is that important? Very important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not only personal relationships, but your know, relationships with, you know, the, you know, the nature again, the earth. Um, well, put that know. another one. You know, relationships with people is eighteen, and relationships with. Nature, like with my, nature, yeah. You know, crying over the Amazon and yeah. Africa. Oh and, yeah, you are. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah. yeah. Horrible. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. Embarrassed, foolish, humiliated. What's that show about you? Um. I get, a humility comes to mind again. What, what humility? Mm -hmm. Okay. How about uh, uh, frustrated, no, hopeless, discouraged, pessimistic, d d despairing? Uh, all I can think of is realistic. Yep, I just wrote that word down. Um, it could also be very self-protective. Yeah, just protective. Like you said, you wake up every morning and realize, oh, I've got cancer and I don't know what's going to happen next. And I, I think if I were in that situation, I wouldn't want to get my hopes up mm -hmm. and have expecta high expectations for them to be taken from me. So it could be protective. Prevent, yeah, yeah pre prevents disappointment. Yeah. Or I think also... Preparing for the future. Oh yeah, put that down, yeah. Prepare for the future. And probably makes, uh, again, the taste of everything taste a lot. Mm -hmm. Appreciate more. Yeah, appreciate more, yeah. Um, um, frustrated. Stuck, thwarted, de defeated. Again, right now, it's, it seems to be a motivator to want to do something that gives meaning to my life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Motivate to, to, to find meaning 
in, in, in my life and, and do meaningful things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dis- despite the cancer uh, diagnosis, it shows courage and grit, determination. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's had that, number 26. Courage. Yeah, you've shown incredible courage. Determination, grit. Anger. Resentment, mad, annoyed. All of these are a hundred. Upset, furious. I think it's realistic. Mm hmm. What, what were the angry thoughts? The angry thoughts have to do with. Uh, well, Marilyn will tell us. Yeah. I'm going to die sooner than, than I thought because it's spreading. Uh, in the past, they've been uh, angry at religious teachers for being conned or something. Mm-hmm. That's still there, but... Um, it's the anger. It's the thought. Um, I'm trying to... I'm reading you know, books by different authors, and they're ass- assuaging a little bit of my anger towards feeling conned by... The Catholic Church, or by, you know, religious writers. So um, I'm finding that very because I do that practice in the morning, and I'm finding it um, very helpful. You know, what is helpful? Um, you know, doing spiritual reading in the morning, and I, and I read a poem every morning. That's also been very helpful. And you, you, and and the thing it, it 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 shows that a lot of spiritual writers might be conning people. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And that you're aware of the of the cons. Yeah, uh, it feels that way. Yeah. And yet, when I look at my my books in my living room, and they're mostly written by the you know spiritual authors like Thomas Merton or Joan Chisitor or uh, Joyce Rupp or Thich Nhat Hanh, um I tell myself they all can't be delusional. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's like a reality check. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you a question then. Uh, I've got a list of 28 positives. There's one or two repetitions, so let's say 25 distinct positives. So why, why then would you want to press that magic button? Because all of these beautiful things about you are going to disappear along with your negative feelings. I would want that to happen. These are... These are very va- valuable to me. Yeah. So um, Matt will tell us what to do next. Well, I'm I'm in the agreement with that. I don't. I wouldn't recommend eliminating all our negative feelings. That that would kind of indicate we don't care about anything or anyone. And I just so admire how much you care mm. about everything important in in the world and including yourself in your own life. and um, Is that I, useful for you, by the way? Yes, it's very useful. In, in what way? Um, it, it kind of um, um, eliminates the, the uh, feelings of um, feeling defective and incompetent, inadequate. Um, makes me feel that there are things about me that are worthwhile and admirable and um, that I really like about myself and would not want to change. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's just do a little magic dial then. Instead of the magic button, maybe we could dial these down. And what would be an ideal uh, level of depression between 0 and 100 to have at the end of our session today? A 10. A 10, is that enough? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. How much anxiety would, would, would you want to have? I'll, I'm recording them here for you. So oh, 25. To, to, to 25, okay. How much uh, guilt and shame? Two. Two, I was thinking more area of three. Okay. <laughs> how, how inferior do you, do you want to feel? Three. Three, okay. Uh, how... How lonely and alone and abandoned do you want to feel? Zero. Zero. How uh, 
how embarrassed, foolish, and humiliated. Zero. Zero. How hopeless and discouraged and pessimistic. Five. How frustrated, stuck. Five. How angry, resentful. Ten. Ten, great. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and see if we can make that happen. And tell me what uh, negative thought you want to uh, start on first. They're all, they're all good. Yeah, I'm going to do. I'm going to die without having lived a meaningful life. Okay. Um, now, um, what, what, what are? Let, let's look at some of the distortions in that thought first. I'm, I'm going to die without having lived a, a meaningful life, because th this is uh, like an aging thought in general for for people. Mm. So, what are the distortions? It's definitely all or nothing thinking. Okay, tell us, tell us why. Uh, you're right, it's, 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 but explain it. Um. Well, there are some things in my life that I've done that are meaningful. Like, you know, going to Nicaragua, getting arrested for um, nonviolent um, demonstrations, um, feeling the empathy I feel for the Amazon forest and um, um, the uh, hurricane um, that's going on. And is that true? That's what you're very saying? true. Mm -hmm. it, how about what you're doing right now, at this moment? Yeah, I think this is meaningful, and I hope it's going to be meaningful for the people that listen to this. Okay, uh, that, that's awesome. That's just one distortion. Should we go through more, or do we have enough to, to crush this sucker I... now? I think there's enough. Okay, so what what are we going to put for the the positive thoughts? Could I talk to you for a minute, Marilyn? Yeah. Uh, I, I I'm telling myself that uh, you know I'm I'm very much like like you, and uh, that that I'm going to die without having lived a, a meaningful life. Does that seem true? No, it doesn't seem true to me. I think you've done things that are quite remarkable, and some things that people know about and some things people don't know about. Okay, would you put that in the right-hand column? Which thought was that one? Oh, yeah. I've, I've done things... I've done things that are remarkable and people know about some and, and don't know about others. And, and what I'm doing at this moment is, is meaningful. Hmm. I don't want to die. And just let those tears come out. We don't want you to die either. When you're feeling tearful right now, what kind of thoughts go through your mind? And are there any pictures um, in your mind and things you're... Well, you know, in some, some ways I wish I would just dropped out of a heart attack. Hmm. 
Um, and, you know, sometimes I have this crazy <clears throat> thought of walking down the street and, you know, hiring somebody to shoot me. <laughs> sure. Since I live close to the ghetto. <laughs> um, and then I'm also grateful that I'm probably not going to um, die of Alzheimer's. Um, but it's just the fact of you know, missing people and you know, the earth and my dogs. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you picture your dog and picture people like when you're feeling sad? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, Cleo's wedding and... Um, and that's and, next week, you said? No, she's getting engaged probably oh, next engaged week. Engaged next week, yeah. And the wedding is going to be way off in the future, oh, probably. Yeah. Um, my dog Maggie is is showing her age, and um, and I'm really worried about her. And I, you know, I, I think her time is more limited than mine. Um, but I know I'll outlive my puppy. Um, you have two dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Maggie's about ten, and Merton will be two in March. Oh yeah. Um, so. Is Cleo gonna take the dog? No, my friend Danielle will take the dog. Oh, Danielle. Cleo has a cat. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's funny, I asked the, the abbess at the monastery if she wanted. I said, you'll probably get a lot of spiritual books after I die. And she started laughing. And she goes, Marilyn, you've given us most of them. <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so... But just, you know, hearing the ocean and, you know, I love river trees and the smell of them and the smell of eucalyptus trees. Um, sun rises and sunsets and things, you know, I realized in my life I've taken for granted, you know, like you know, having the first sip of my latte in the morning. It's yeah. Like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> the first what in the morning? A sip of latte. I go oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you know, tastes like a, you know juicy peach. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm feeling really close to you right now, Marilyn. I think when the tears came, uh, it was you just became so present and just coming through clear. Just like a bell, I feel very, very close to you, very present for you right Thank now. Thank you. It's just so hard. To, to imagine leaving behind all those precious things, the sound of the ocean, how beautiful. Having to say goodbye. Yeah. I mean, that would be the, re the reason I'm really of going back east is be to say goodbye to my cousins. It seems tremendously meaningful. Yeah. I lived a summer with them when they lived in um, Greenwich, Connecticut, and th they were much younger. But my one cousin had a hard time saying Meryl, Marilyn, my cousin Jane, so she nicknamed, she nicknamed me Mary Lion, so that they call me Mary Lion. So, but I've been blessed. I have some wonderful memories of this, you know, especially being in that summer in Greenwich Clinic was probably one of the best summers of my life. And seminary was probably the best five years of my life. Being in Nicaragua, um, you know, getting arrested, <laughs> spending a month in jail. In Nicaragua? No, here. Oh, you were a month in jail? Yeah. For what? Processing, protesting at Livermore Lab. Oh, a month in jail. Yeah. Wow. When was that? Oh, 
early 80s, we were in, we were in tents. We had um, gone out to Livermore Lab to see where they were going to put, um, put us. And they, we brought a Geiger counter, and the Geiger counter just went off the Richter scale. So we went to court and uh, got an injunction from a judge saying that you can't put, especially women, in a place that has radioactivity. Um, so then they built these two huge tents. So the men were in one tent, and the women were in another tent off the grounds of Santa Rita um, Prison. Oh. So. And I remember once getting arrested and I said to the officer, I always made eye contact and I said, I know you don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. My friends are going inside the federal building. Can I go with them instead of going downtown to the police department? So he let me go in with them to the federal building. So. What was what has this been like for you in the last few minutes when you began to cry and just allow yourself to feel all the things that you've loved so much? It's been um, it's been a gift because I I, I, I I don't I haven't cried about dying um, since two years ago when I was di first diagnosed. I mean I cried a little bit when Dr. Daw said that the pet scan was so bad. Um, and that my time actually was limited because um, she'd been, always been so hopeful that your PET scans are so good, your blood is so good. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Um, and again, I don't look sick, I don't feel sick. And I feel like I'm going to wake up in the morning, it's just going to, you know, hit me. But I just feel so safe here and held, feel, feel held that I feel it's okay to, to cry and to be myself. and to let people know really how hard this is. So that's, that's how I'm feeling. As, of, as we did before, this, this really feels like a gift. And I feel very honored and um, blessed to be here with all of you. I feel the same way, Marilyn. You know, that's how we feel. I always have a hard time believing. I believe it, but it's hard taking. It's a hard time what? It's a hard time believing that, but it, it's hard. It's not hard believing it. It's hard to really taking it in. What, what is it hard to believe? It's that I'm a I'm a good person. I'm doing good things. Could I borrow this again? <laughs> um, <coughs> Matt just stepped out temporarily to to cough. Um, could I could could I continue with this a little bit? Yeah. So, um, so but um, but isn't it true that I'm going to die without having lived a meaningful life? No, I've I've done meaningful things. I mean, I think um, <clears throat> um, Yeah, I've, I've done meaningful things. Again, some people know about them and some people don't. Um, so, um, one of the things I've been asked to do is to um, write the uh, homily that would want said at my funeral. To write the, oh, oh yeah. The homily. Okay. And, you know, I'm, beginning to pick out music and um, so I just 
you know, it's like you throw a party and nobody shows up. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's always been your fear. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, Tom Weston. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be helpful to smash some more of these, or yeah. do you want to? Yes, please. Well, um, that might be true, but uh, I, I, I feel I've been abandoned by God. Yeah. Yeah, at times I feel like I'm in a desert and uh, and I'm lost. I have no idea. I don't have any sense of direction. And um, that's very stark and hot. And, um, and I'm again, I'm alone and um, I'm really scared. Um, and then other times I've... I experience God and other people or in nature, and then I, f I really do feel a deep connection. Like being here, you know, when I you know, take my dogs to Point Isabella, which is a dog walk, and it's by the bay, and, you know, seeing the you know, skyline of San Francisco or the Golden Gate Bridge, and seeing the dogs play with each other. and. But, but, uh, but shouldn't I be feeling God more than I have though? Isn't, isn't my, aren't my spiritual experiences, you know, too, too minimal? Shouldn't I be having more powerful, robust God experiences? I definitely shouldn't be angry with them. <laughs> well, I am. I'll just say if I ever get an opportunity to meet God, um, He's going to get a stern talking to. Pardon me? He's going to get a stern talking yes. to. Yeah. Yes. A lot of questions. <laughs> Especially why are there ticks? Um, but, I, you know, I think like joy, you, you can't tolerate it all the time. I think that's the same thing with experiencing God. I don't think you can, t I think even the Mystics felt that you can't experience it all the time. It so, ebbs, ebbs and flows like the ocean. So you're saying it's okay that I'm, I'm not, that I'm sometimes feeling abandoned by God and other times feeling more spiritual. You're saying that's okay. Yeah, I feel. Yeah, I'm just getting that. I, that feels really okay. And and that's true, or are you just bullshitting no, no, me? No, I, 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 that really feels okay. Well, you pointed out I did a lot of positive things in my life, but shouldn't I have done more positives and fewer negatives? Probably, <laughs> but I think that's true of all all of us. That's true of everyone. You so it's 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 okay. That... Yeah, I think we look back on our lives and we say that, yeah, I did some positives and I did things I, you know, probably shouldn't. Or I hate the word shouldn't. I, that we have chosen not to have done, but either I did them consciously or I did them unconsciously, and that really is okay because I think, at least for me, oftentimes. From my, my from my alcoholism, I certainly learned a lot about myself, and um, and being in recovery is, you know, even opened my eyes more to that. You so you're saying I can accept my alcoholism and my many screw ups? Yeah, I think my alcoholism is a gift. Okay, well, you beat me on that one, but but I <laughs> <laughs> but I but I have no faith. Um. Again, I, I have faith in other people. Having faith in a higher power, or God, or the divine is a little bit harder. Um, <clears throat> but when I, I see, um, like the first responders, that to me is you know, faith in action. I have a lot of, and when I go to Stanford, you know, I, pray for the cancer patients and their friends and families and the doctors and the researchers and the nurses and the housekeepers because I really do think they live a life of faith every day. Um, 
But should I have more faith? A stronger faith? Um, again, I, I think it ebbs and flows for me. There are days that I feel like I have a stronger faith, and there are days where it's, it feels like I'm wavering or walking on a tightrope. Well, I'm telling myself that I, I shouldn't wa waver and walk on a tightrope. I should have, you know, a mountain of faith. Well, I don't think any of the spiritual leaders, including Jesus, had a strong faith 24-7. I think they had their moments of doubt and questioning. You want to go to uh, who's winning? I think I am. Big or small? Big. Big or huge? Huge. Huge. You want to go to externalization of voices? Okay. Um, it's going to be more brutal. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Uh, can I talk to you for a minute, Marilyn? You know who I am? You're Marilyn. Yeah, and you know who that is? That's Marilyn. You know who that is? That's Marilyn. Yeah. And I just want to point out that you have no faith. Well, as I just said, it, it wavers. It comes and goes. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes it feels like when you build a sandcastle, then the, the ocean comes in and washes it away, and then you've got to start all over again. Um so that's kind of where I'm at right now. Who won? I certainly didn't. Did not? Did not. Okay, do, do a role reversal. Marilyn, you know, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but um, you don't have any faith. No, that's untrue. Sometimes I have more faith. Sometimes I have less faith. <laughs> Sometimes I have almost no faith. Uh, but I checked with God on that. He said, that's A-OK. -okay. <laughs> <laughs> you won that one. <laughs> Big or small? Big, Big or huge, huge. huge. And how did I win huge? Um, I think paradoxically by saying sometimes you have faith, sometimes you don't, and you've talked to God, and you, know, and you have faith. Yeah, and, and just for our listeners, it's, what I'm modeling is the acceptance paradox. You're, you're, uh, see, it's not your cancer that's causing your mood, it's your distorted thoughts. It's not your oscillating faith that causes your shame. It's it's the should statements mm -hmm. saying that that you should be have something something that, that that you don't don't have. Can you imagine if God came in and said you should have had more faith? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. I mean, he'd look kind of like <laughs> Trump. <laughs> I did it again. I, I don't learn. <laughs> We're going to lose three quarters of our audience. I'm Only sorry. Third, I third. apologize. But do you see what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Uh, um, so uh, okay, so you beat me on that one, but but I do want you but to actually, know. Actually, you you beat it. So let's have Marilyn try to beat that one. Yeah, well, you have no faith. Um. Well, I think I do have faith because I go to church every every day. I'm very active in my church. I you know pray every day, um, and um, you know, I read poetry. I have faith, a deep faith in other people. Um, I have, you know, faith in the three of you. Um, and I have, you know, when I see people risk their lives for the greater good, that, then I see faith that, as a verb, not as a noun. Who won? I did. Big or small? Big, huge. Big or hu huge. Yeah. How did you win huge? <clears throat> I think the acceptance models as well. Okay. Um, can, can I give an absurd criticism? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Marilyn, we have faith ratings now. <laughs> and uh, I have a higher faith rating than you. Oh, now that's a lie. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that may be true, that may not be true. <laughs> I won the faith championship this year. Get <laughs> the gold medal. Yeah. Is that helpful? Yeah. Yeah. In what way? Um, it's humorous. 
Yeah, yeah. but what's the message behind the humor? <clears throat> that it's that's a matter of you know sub subjective opinion. Yeah, but but, al but also acceptance. Yeah. Uh, which is is kind of the spiritual principle. Yes, definitely. It's not the lack of faith that, that's the problem. It's it's the beating up on yourself. Do, yeah, do you see? Yeah, do you, do you see that? Thought. Yes. Yeah. Like, not, yeah. That really that was a lightning bolt just now. It did it. Yeah. Like what, what did Jesus say on the cross? My God, my God, will have you forsaken me? Yeah. Yeah. So join the club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm in good company. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Can you imagine going up to Jesus? You're losing your faith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, uh, I always like to talk about the baby Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, David. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, you, you want to take a couple shots? Okay, so I'll play Marilyn's negative thoughts here. Yeah. Are there any in particular, Marilyn, you would, you'd like to... Take a crack at, because we want to come across with a crisp message. I think for, for our listeners, not only sorry for cl clanking my 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 board clipboard here, but the, the not only the uh, spiritual aspect, but also the the psychological aspect. Because uh, you know how 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 do you recover from from life's bl blows? And is it really true that it's just distorted thoughts that, that, that create our mis misery? It's, it's okay to be sad about losing all of these things that you love and to, to be, have, have an intense appreciation for, for, for so, many, so many things. But the, uh, it, it, it's the, be the beating up on yourself that, it, that is still the, the cause of the problem, both from a spiritual and from a psychological point of point of view yeah yeah i think a lot of that negative <clears throat> thought is my mother you know her negative words you know that pound were pounded at me all the time yeah you're not good enough yeah, yeah. okay i think it's especially hard to realize that when we're feeling awful yeah the, yeah. the, the awful reason. feelings aren't, aren't as much the problem even as as our shame and having them yeah um, so Marilyn, I'm your negative thought. I just wanted to let you know that you're wasting your life. <coughs> well, right now I feel like I am because what I do is, I mean, I go to church in the morning and there's a small group of us that go out to breakfast afterwards. And, um, um, although I don't eat anything cause I, I can't pay for, I mean, some, one person takes turn paying for everybody and I just can't do that. Um, and then I come home and I watch TV, you know, spend all day long watching TV, though, you know, there are days I'll, you know, make a concerted effort to, you know, get the dogs in the car and drive to Point Isabella up to the trail and take them for a walk. Um, Maggie can't walk that much anymore, so sometimes I'll leave her home, but the puppy really has to get out and run. Um, if he doesn't, then I pay the price because he starts acting out. Um, so that way, I just feel like I'm wasting my life. I feel like I'm not doing anything, you know, productive. I, I could be, you know, volunteering someplace, or, you know, like, yeah, I could be volunteering someplace. Who who do you feel won that that round? You did, or I did. I certainly <clears throat> did. We could try a role reversal. Do you want? Can I be Marilyn, and you can be Marilyn's negative thoughts? Yeah. You, you know, Marilyn. You know that you know you're dying, and all you're doing is wasting your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some some truth in that, and and I notice some of my best, most fond moments of in life or kind of time that I'm not doing that much. I'm just enjoying the first sip of uh, a latte in the morning, or biting into a peach. I'm not accomplishing a great deal, <laughs> but <laughs> listening to the ocean and. Just being present is just such a wonderful feeling. I'd like to waste more of my time, actually. Um, <laughs> and in, in addition, TV is fine as long as you don't watch the, the political news channels, <laughs> which are guaranteed to cause depression. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> or suicidal thoughts. <laughs> 
or, or on the side of the <laughs> Yeah, all right, all right. I've got another way of responding to that. I, I don't know if that, did that, the, 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 that was a win? The, the, you won. I won. Yeah. Big or small? Big, huge, huge. Huge. And huge. how did he win huge? Again, the acceptance model and, and yeah. reminding <clears throat> me of the things that, that do give me, that are worthwhile. Yeah, like what would you say to a dear friend like you who's got cancer and says, I'm watching a lot of TV, do you, do you think I'm wasting my life? No, I mean, I'd like to know what programs you're watching or what movies you're watching because I'm a TV addict myself, so I can understand that. So you're saying it's okay to watch TV? Mm-hmm. It's, okay it's okay to okay. do trivial things? Yeah. Yeah, Sometimes can I come you... over? What's on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that true? You're just bullshitting no, I'm me. Tr- it's true. I think you can learn a lot from watching some TV programs. And that's okay to, after breakfast, just go home and just, just watch TV. Yeah. What was that poem, They Also Serve, Who Also Stand and Wait, John Milton on His Blindness? I think we had to memorize that one in high school. Mm-hmm. I remember that line. They also serve. I, I missed that one. They the also idea. stand and wait. Hmm. I don't know, standing in line and waiting. This doesn't sound like very good, but it was. I, I think yeah, there's something, mm. something there. I probably don't even remember it correctly. Uh, the uh, but but uh, but 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 you know you you waste a lot of time, Marilyn. Um. Uh. I know it's wasting time. I, I spend a lot of time watching TV, but you know I do get up in the morning and I've got my um, spiritual practice that I do and read the New York Times um, and um, you know go to church, come home and turn on the TV. Um, I make sure I you know um, take care of my garden, uh, take care of the dogs, um, you know go to meetings. Um, so that's not wasting time. It's doing, be doing something productive. That's great. Now you beat it with the the uh, self self defense paradigm. Did you win big or small? I thought I think huge. H- huge. Now the acceptance paradox is, is the opposite, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, do you want to see how that would yeah. would go? Hit hit me with it. So you know. Marilyn, you you know you're dying, but you're wasting a lot of time. Yeah, thank you. I've been taking time wasting lessons from from David. <laughs> Is that helpful? Yes. In in what way? It's the acceptance model again. Yeah. Uh, r- and with a little humor. Yeah, yeah, right. And 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 there's a motivational thing there. Uh, see, beating up on yourself has been the key to your five right. postdoctoral degrees or post-college mm-hmm. degrees, whatever, your, your graduate degrees and, and the, the many accomplishments that you've had and, and continue to have. And, and, and what I'm suggesting is radically lowering your standards. Maybe that's not something you want to do. I think I, I have, and part of me feels like I have no choice because I, I do feel tired and yeah, but you can, you do have a choice because you can keep beating up on yourself. Oh, about that, yeah. Yeah, and I'm just re- realizing more and more how much the negative thoughts are really impacting the way I'm living my life right now. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the cause of your, of your dis- distress. So it's almost like the negative thoughts are termites. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Are, are there any others there? No, no, I think you cover them all. And that's for, are there any of them that stick or that just? No, they don't. No, I, I don't believe this anymore that I'm a, um, <clears throat> that I feel alone and scared. I'm scared, but I don't feel alone. And I think anybody in my situation would feel scared. Exactly, R- right? Yeah. Um, um, any guilt or shame left? No. Okay, Again, I, I really think the negative thought. I mean, I, I really think the negative thoughts are like termites. They're just yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, and there's really um, uh, one one solution to to all of them. Oh, well, I guess two solutions: self defense and the acceptance paradox. Mm. In my own opinion, I think the acceptance paradox is more powerful, but it's maybe riskier or something. More seems more more extreme, um, but um, um, j just. That's the one that works for me. Just accept your screwed up nature. <laughs> just right. Uh, uh, the, yeah, that's um, interesting. We're grateful to be here. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're grateful to ha to have you. It's a real gift. Since you mentioned it's hard to believe, so I'll say it again. It's a gift for me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I really enjoyed your training groups. You were a huge part of those training groups. Always front and center, first one there. <laughs> yeah, a lot of first fun. First to have your hand up, ready to volunteer. Yeah. And David, yours too. <clears throat> You want to see how you're feeling right now? <clears throat> how sad are you feeling at this moment? Um, probably about 50, but it's a good sad. Okay. It's not a bad so sad. 50 good, yeah. How anxious? Um, Twenty. Okay. How um, guilty and ashamed? Zero. How inferior or inadequate? Two. How lonely and alone? Zero. Mm -hmm. How um, embarrassed, foolish, humiliated? Zero. Zero. How um, hopeless, discouraged, pessimistic? One. How frustrated? One. One. How angry? One. One. So what, what, what were the healing? pieces tonight. Um, yeah, I, I think <laughs> looking at um, my f um, negative feelings and seeing what what it says about me that's positive, um, going over some of the negative thoughts and defeating them, um, being reminded that it's the, the thoughts that cause, you know, um, the uh, the negative feelings and um, and that the thoughts basically are not basically that they are distorted. Um, yeah, and and then from a spiritual point of view, and we don't want to go too heavy on religion because our listeners are from all different religions of the world and many who aren't aren't religious at all. But but since you're Catholic and and, and Christian. Uh, that the uh, does acceptance does that have a Christian meaning? Definitely. And and what is that meaning? Because because you 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 say you're kind of screwed up and you failed in a lot of ways and you're not as faithful. You know your faith isn't the strong faith that you vibrant faith that you're that, that you're wanting and you're looking back on your alcoholism and different failures and relationships and various and various things and then. What what does the acceptance paradox have, have to do with uh, with Christianity again? Mm -hmm. What does it have to do with it? It has to do with you know accepting life on life terms, and um, accepting that I um, am um, a spiritual person on a human path. R right, r right, and now that. that your knowledge of theology is way beyond my my own, but what what is the idea of forgiveness of sin and holy communion? What's what's the idea there? Um, well, acknowledging what 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 we have done or not done, and then making a commitment to learn from that. I don't think so. That's not my understanding of, huh. uh, as, as as a good that Lutheran forgiveness. minister's son. <laughs> uh, for for better or for worse, it, it seems to me that the message of 
of communion is to, to let go of beating up on yourself for, for, for various failures or sins or, or whatever, and that you're saved by grace, not, not through good works. Right, right. And, and, and it seems to me uh, that, that, that that's what, what the acceptance yeah. pa paradox is. Um, uh, and, and that's also the idea behind the dark night of the soul, the, the, the mystical voyage, that w when you're the most lost, that, that's, that's the step on the way to, to enlightenment. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that that's, that's okay to, to be having moments w without, without faith. Uh, I don't know, does any of this mean anything or does it sound totally loony? Or? No, it means a lot to me. It does? Yeah. Yeah, it's like being in, in a dark room and you can see one, you know, the light of one candle illuminates a lot more than you realize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Which th this experience has been for me. And, um, and I also think community means I'm not, I'm not going through this alone. It's, it's, it's with other people. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. I think it's about grace that not works. And grace is freely given. Yeah, yeah, and and, and uh, cannot be earned. Yeah, it's impossible to earn it. It's a gift. I still take pride in my my, my faith championship. <laughs> <laughs> Your gold medal. <laughs> well, any other kind of closing? Things, Rhonda, you've been very quiet. You want to grab? Does your microphone work? You want to? Yeah. What's it been like from your perspective? You know, I feel like I, you know, my role is really just as a host and not as another therapist. I left that up to the expert, um, David and Matt. But, um, you know, it just strikes me in how courageous you are, Marilyn. I mean, to come here and to talk about your faith and to live a conscious life and be a seeker. You know, a lot of people don't talk about that or even think about it. A lot of people, when they're afraid or numb or depressed, they just do everything they can to numb themselves out. And you're doing the opposite. You're doing everything you can to feel and to live and to, um, you know, look at the sunset and, and delight in the first sip of coffee and the bite of the peach and, you know, playing with your dog at the park. And, um, you know, I agree with Matt and David. It's just been an honor to be here and be mm even as a passive listener to, you know, to be in your presence as somebody who's, you know, not that kind of a spiritual person. And, it's just great to hear. And, 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 the, and the message that you have is for, is for everybody, even though we put it in a religious context, it's for people of all, all religions, all faiths, or all loss of faiths, that when, when we come, come to the end of our, our life, we, you can be saying, oh, uh, you can beat up on yourself. And at, at any point in life saying, I'm not smart enough, I haven't achieved enough, I didn't earn enough money, I didn't ma make enough of, of an impact. That's just another version of my faith isn't, isn't, isn't good enough. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and, and that, uh, that in, in acceptance, uh, you, 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 can find, you can find joy I don't just. I feel like I'm just saying trite, stupid things. But. but you can also find peace, and it sounds like that's what what you're, you know. To I mean, tell me if this is wrong, but it feels like you seem more peaceful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel more peaceful yeah. and more accepting. I can't change what's going to happen. It really is about letting go. And I think there will be some protection for this fear of your friend who died 20 years ago of, of, of lung cancer. And we have other solutions now, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so. Again, I feel very blessed by the care I'm getting at Stanford and um, the fact that um, I don't feel sick and I, I'm not in any pain. And I attribute a lot of that to you know, really taking good care of myself, but I also attributed the fact that so many people um, are praying for me. Have we done relapse prevention? Is that necessary here? Or? Oh, we can, sure. You, you, you Go for it. If, yeah, that's good. Well, <clears throat> Marilyn, we've, I don't know, achieved something pretty 
miraculous and awesome today. And, and I guess I wonder, um, uh, what are your thoughts on how long this positive feeling and sense of calm and peace will last? I have no idea. Yeah. And, uh, do you think there's... It's ugly head tomorrow. What do you, yeah, what do you think the odds are that you will have a relapse? Oh, yeah, well... 100%? 100%, yeah. definitely. And when you have that relapse, do you think it'll just occur to you, oh, this is just a relapse, no big deal, I'll do a mood log or listen to the uh, recording or something like that? Or will it feel true? Will it seem completely convincing? Um, no, I think I'll do a daily <clears throat> mood log and really be aware of my negative thoughts and listen to the podcast um, and um, oh, yeah. you know, just, have the, just have the mental picture of being here. We can even send you uh, as early as you know, next week or something the, the, the podcast, the recording, once it's edited and, and integrated together and can send it to you on, on uh, Dropbox. And, and on Dropbox, and I can put a, or, or, or Rhonda can, a, a sharing link. So then you'll just be able to, to download it to your computer or to cell phone or, or whatever. Yeah, either. And mm -hmm. then you'll have it right, right uh, available to, to listen to. Oh, wow. That sounds like a, a good good homework assignment mm -hmm. to follow through. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, after you've done uh, uh, the, the, this daily mood log, when the relapse comes, uh, will, will you email us? Definitely. Either mission accomplished or I stubbornly refused? Definitely. And I will follow through. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'd love that. I'd love to hear from you. Yeah. yeah. Me too. And we're, we're around any time. I appreciate that. Yeah, you could pick up the phone too. Should do, do this more often. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn it off on the count of one, two, three. And, it, thank, and you. thank you so much, for listeners, for hanging in there with us. Yeah. And it was, it yeah. was a grace for all of us. We really appreciate it. Thanks, thank you. Everyone. And thanks, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes for this episode under the podcast page. You will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non-therapists. We welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. The theme music is Gypsy Jazz in Paris, 1935, composed and performed by Brett Van Donzel. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.